Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will talk about three ways you can create artificial intelligence models with TensorFlow. In most tutorials, only one of them is talked about and the two others are often overlooked. And I wanted to make this video because I think all three of them are highly powerful. For example, Tesla's autopilot or full self-driving capabilities wouldn't be possible with just the most common one shown in most of the tutorials, but it's actually possible with something very close to the third one we will talk about. If you want to see videos on machine learning, artificial intelligence, and Python, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's first talk about the three ways you can create your artificial intelligence models with TensorFlow, and then we'll get a more deeper dive into what all of these do, what are their powerful sites. First one is the sequential model, and this is the most common one that's shown in most tutorials, and this is also the most beginner friendly one. The second one is something called the functional API, and this allows you to create more complex models that can have more real life applications. And and the third way to create machine learning models is with something called subclassing and with subclassing you have the most flexibility and most control over how you create your models as well as how your model behaves so let's start with the first one with the sequential model what you can do is create models sequentially which means layer by layer and you can create models that can have only one input and one output. This can be useful if you are making simple systems that can include one camera or one speaker. If you are using one camera and you have an object detection system that will only use one camera and will have one function only. And I actually recommend starting with this one because it is the most beginner friendly one and you can focus on actual learning the artificial intelligence and machine learning concepts and apply most of them with sequential models. But I definitely don't recommend you stopping here because there are a lot more capabilities that you can do in real life than having a simple one input and one output model. What I recommend is actually after learning the first model, which is a sequential model, moving to the functional model or the functional API. And what you can do with functional API is actually to create models with many inputs and many outputs as well as creating more complex machine learning models so you can create more efficient and effective networks that can perform more complex tasks. One example would be making a security system with a camera and a microphone and what you can do with them is create a model that has face recognition and also have voice ID in that and this way you can authenticate people with a video. So in this example we are using a single model that will have both a camera and a voice input which we couldn't have done with the sequential model and we can add more security to our system this way and in terms of multiple outputs you can authenticate people to elevators in their buildings and when you have face and voice recognition on people what you can do is to unlock the elevator for them and unlock only the parts which they have access to which are the levels that they have access to. So this model would also have two outputs, whether the elevator is locked or not, and the levels that they can have access to. This is just one example, but you can do so much more and much more efficient models with functional API as well. And the third way you can create artificial intelligence models with TensorFlow is something called subclassing. And with subclassing, you have the most control over your machine learning model, and you can create new layers as well as new models that didn't exist before but that are result of your experimentation. That's why subclassing is really powerful for researchers as well. Another major advantage of subclassing is that you can run your artificial intelligence models in two modes. One of them is something called a static computational graph that you can create. And you can do this with all three of the models with sequential, functional, and subclassing that as you write the code will be defined and when you run the model, it will actually run as a whole. Another thing you can do with a subclass model is actually run your code in something called eager mode. And that eager mode allows you to run your code in a more Pythonic way. And the major advantage of this is you can run every code just like you're running Python code and you can run everything line by line. And this makes debugging your models easier. And you can use everything you can do in Python in your models as well. So with subclassing, you can both create models as you can do with the other models and serialize your model. And you can also create dynamic models that will run just like another Python code. And what Tesla uses actually is much closer to this. Tesla is actually using PyTorch for their autopilot software as well as full self-driving capabilities are achieved with PyTorch. And PyTorch is most closely related to subclassing model in TensorFlow. So if you learn either one of them, it will be much easier to learn the other one within just a couple of days. So depending on what you wanna do, I actually recommend you learning the sequential one, functional and the 
a pleasant one, especially if you are just getting started, because Sequential allows you to get started with machine learning and artificial intelligence, and you can focus on learning the concepts behind machine learning and artificial intelligence while building your models more easily. Then you can move on to functional model, where you can create more functional models and more complex models, where you can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. And I would move to subclassing model, where you'll have more ideas on how your code actually can run. And it also allows you to have more flexibility in both creation and execution of your machine learning models. So that was it for today's video. If you don't understand something, leave them as a comment down below and I'll get back to them as soon as possible. And if your question requires a more comprehensive explanation, I'll be happy to make a video on them as well. With that, I hope you got some value out of this video and I'll see you next time.